Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Got a little cut on my knee here. Hold on just a second. All right. Uh, this morning we're going to read out of Mark 2, 4. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Let's go to that verse. Big verse, and when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was laying. And you guys know this story. So let's, Jesus heals a paralytic. Let's go up and read a couple. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Now, try to imagine uh, a large crowd of people trying to get into a, a, a local bar because a celebrity had showed up there. And they wanted to see this celebrity, somebody they don't get to see very often, out in the middle of some town somewhere. And we've had that happen here before. Um, if you know anything, if, you, you, if you're from Texas, you know about Green Hall. And that's over outside of New Braunfels. And there's a uh, an old uh, country bar slash restaurant thing there. And um, it's, it's a thing. They go there on Saturday night and do country dancing and stuff like that. And they usually have a live band and stuff like that. Um People like Willie Nelson go there, um, uh, Faith Hill, bunch of famous country stars go there. Uh, other people too. There's all kinds. Of, there's been rappers over there. There's all kinds of people that go there, and everybody is real cool about when these people go there, and they just treat them like normal people. And that's kind of how we are down here. Uh, there's times you go over to um, Luckenbach, just like the song. It's a real town. There's almost nothing there. And there's almost nothing there for a reason. They leave it that way. They want it to stay that way. Little bay town out in the middle of nowhere. And there's times you'll pull up there and Willie Nelson's bus will be there. A couple of the other guys will be there. Travis Tritt shows up there sometimes. And they'll pull their bus, their tour buses up in there. And they'll pull up and just sit out and start playing music on the guitar. And a few people show up. And motorcyclists show up and that. You know, everybody treats everybody like family around here in most cases. You go to another city and some other places, and if a famous person shows up anywhere, it is there. It's mobbed by people. That's what's happening here. Just a mob of people. To the point that everybody's in the back jumping up and down going, I can't see, I can't see. They're trying to hold their cell phone up so they can get a f f film footage of it, you know, stuff like that. Well, that's what's happening here. He, he's, he's attracted a lot of attention. Because he's becoming very famous. Verse 3, then they came to him bringing the, a paralytic who was carried by four men. But they could see they couldn't get in there. They couldn't get into this place where he was. And evidently it was a decent sized place. But they couldn't get into the place it was. Because there were so many people there was being mobbed. When they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So, so evidently the crowd was big enough that they couldn't yell up. Big crowd. So they uncovered the roof. So this is a decent sized place that had a roof big enough for, for four men and a paralytic on a bed to get on top of. Uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was laying. <clears throat> when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. <clears throat> Jesus is making a point. He's making an interesting point here. Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why does this man speak blasphemies again uh, like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit they had reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. So Jesus did three things here. One, 
He proved what was more important. Salvation. It's more important to have your sins forgiven than to be healed. So many people hyper-focus on healing. Your sins need to be forgiven. That is the most important thing. We've got a whole eternity with a brand new body that never gets tired and never gets sick and never gets sore again. So in this short life with those kinds of things are a non-issue. But we need forgiveness of sins. The second thing he proved. Their hypocrisy. Slash his authority. They didn't understand what his authority was. He was showing them what his authority was. I can forgive sin and heal at the same time. The third thing. That he was Lord. And that he was Lord of all. So in this one scenario here, in this one instance here, he proved three different things. And all of them proving that who he was but most of them didn't see it immediately he rose took his bed went out in the presence of them all so that all were amazed and glorified God saying we never saw anything like this very powerful very incredible we would do well to take time to read some of these things and this is why I cover 11 verses if I, if I can if, if that, there's enough there, this is why we need to cover these things in detail in their context. Because there's more contained within there. The Lord proves his authority and proves his lordship in every scenario. There's always more there than meets the eye. And like this verse 4, there's going to be more there. It's an example of believing. Our devotion says faith is full of inventions. The house was full, a crowd blocked up the door, but faith found a way of getting to the Lord and placing the palsied man before him. If we cannot get sinners where Jesus is by ordinary methods, we must use extraordinary ones. Interesting. It seems according to Luke 5.19 that a tiling had been removed, which would make dust and cause a measure of danger to those below. Where the case is very urgent, we must not mind running some risks and shocking some proprieties. Let's go to Luke 5.19 real quick, since we have a second verse here. So Luke 5.19 has the same story. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst of before Jesus. Now let's read this one in context. See what different details are here. Jesus heals a paralytic. Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of the, every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. Big crowd. Big crowd. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed, through a tiling into the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to them, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been laying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. These men weren't going to let him just come in and hang out and everybody take up all the time. We got a man that needs to be healed, Lord. I would say it would have been good for them to let themselves down in there too and kneel before him for forgiveness. But the point is made. 
where the case is very urgent, we must not mind running some risks and shocking some proprieties. This is the case with a lot of Christians who are willing to stand up, willing to do what it takes, willing to go to bat for somebody or come to the defense of somebody or grab them by the collar and pull them into there. Jesus was there to heal and therefore fall what might. Faith ventured all so that her poor paralyzed charge might have his sins forgiven. Oh, that we had more daring faith among us. Cannot we, dear readers, seek it this morning for ourselves and for our fellow workers? And will we not try today to perform some gallant act for the love of souls and for the glory of the Lord? The world is constantly inventing. Genius serves all the purposes of human desire. Cannot faith invent too, and reach by some new means the outcasts who lie perishing around us? It was the presence of Jesus which excited victorious courage in the forebears of the palsied man. Is not the Lord among us now? Have we seen his face for ourselves this morning? Have we felt his healing power in our own souls? If so, then through door, through window, or through roof, let us, breaking through all impediments, labor to bring poor souls to Jesus. All means are good and decorous when faith and love are truly set on winning souls. If hunger for bread can break through stone walls, surely hunger for souls is not to be hindered in its efforts. O Lord, make us quick to suggest methods of reaching thy poor, sin-sick ones and bold to carry them out at all hazards. Now, right away, people are going to say, but I haven't had any opportunities. I understand I haven't either. And there are times where we're not going to have opportunities for that. This is why living for him, making the scriptures and, and what he is doing a part of almost every conversation if possible. This is why, this, this is how we're able to make, <coughs> oh, excuse me, this is how we're able to make I, man, that cough just made me lose, completely lose my train of thought. Okay, I don't know what just happened. I just completely lost my train of thought. Mine just went completely blank. So, we may not have opportunities that become obvious, but every day, Something as simple as making breakfast is an opportunity. Something as simple as talking on the phone with a family member is an opportunity. The door doesn't always open for us to be able to do it. That happens. The avenue to get into the conversation, sorry, my knee is bleeding again. To get into the conversation doesn't always present itself. And there are times where we don't have the words. Living for him every day creates that avenue. Because if they don't hear us speaking or we haven't got the words or we're not able to come to a place where we can, you know, an opportunity where we can get this into the conversation, then the way we live speaks on our behalf. People see it. They're always around it when they're around us. Now, what I've understood here, here lately is people will take off and they, and they won't hang around anymore. They'll stop talking to you and stop hanging around you. And it, it is what it is. But the one thing we can't ever do is make an excuse. We can't make excuses. There will always be an opportunity for us to at least mention him. I, I've run into backlash on this. I've I had opportunities and I've started to talk about it and immediately it stops. Or they stop it. They don't want to hear it. Um, today, the way the world is today, it's really hard to do this. But the doors are still open to do it. Uh, many people have already made their intentions known. Uh, I don't want to hear you talk about this anymore. Don't talk about this with 
these people anymore, my kids, grandkids, whatever the case may be, because many of you have told me the situations that you're in on this kind of stuff. Whole family, nobody wants to hear about it. And some of us are in these boats. Either they, people actively are telling us they don't want to hear about it, or they passively do it. In my house, they passively do it. In my circles, they, they passively don't want to hear about it. I got a friend, and you start talking about the Bible. Is that in the Bible? Yes. Where is it at? It's, uh, I have to go look it up, but it's here. Well, it's not in the Bible. I'm not interested. You don't even know what's in the Bible, so how do you even know whether you're interested in it or not? I told him that one time. I said, I said you don't even know the Bible. Well, I've read it. I was like, I do this every day. You don't know the Bible. And you, for the, your, but your first reaction speaks about what kind of faith you have because you immediately question, is that in the Bible? Before you even hear what's, what's coming. And you do that on every single subject. There is not one single thing that anybody can mention that you don't ask, is that in the Bible? Which tells me you've never read it because if you read it, you would know that was in the Bible. So you've got a problem. And it has nothing to do with people telling you stuff that isn't in the Bible. It has to do with you. Now, we have a lot of people who are believers, but they're falling away. They're backsliding. The Lord's going to heal that stuff. But it's very important for us to at least attempt. And I'm running into this. Not everybody does. I run into a lot. I, I fail a lot. When I look at my life, I see a whole series of failures. When I talk to other people, I fail a lot. The way I articulate doesn't isn't everybody's flavor. In fact, most people don't want the flavor. the The way I come across isn't people don't want to listen to that stuff. The first thing they want to do is they want to start uh, arguing. What I've discovered in my own life is that a lot of people, when they look at me, they talk to me. I'm the teacher slash dad slash stepdad slash brother slash cousin that they hate. It, it's the sound of my voice, it's the way I look, it's the way I present myself, I don't know. It's one of the things. But that I, that's how I come across to a lot of people. So when I open that door and start talking, immediately there's backlash. They say, this is my opportunity to tell this guy I can't stand him because he reminds me of somebody I don't like. And so that's what they do. They respond very negatively to that. That doesn't mean we stop. That doesn't mean we get quiet. And I've had this conversation with a guy telling me did our little discussion uh, finally get your thinking straight on sharing that stuff and let you know I don't want to hear about it no I'm just not going to waste my pearls of wisdom before swine well the guy got mad what's that supposed to mean you're swine what I have to offer you is pearls of wisdom I'm not wasting them on you anymore because you've made it vibrantly clear you don't care about that. But I, I, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Well, obviously you're not, because your instant response to the gospel was to show hatred towards the person delivering it. That makes you a Pharisee. If you if you bother to read the Bible, you know these things. I do read the Bible. Then why don't you know these things? But that's not in there. Here's the verse. Throws a piece of paper back at me and he says, I think you're just trying to cause division. No, actually, you're the one causing division. Well, we can't know all these things and know them exactly. Well, actually, we can if we re bother to read the Bible. You, the problem is you haven't read it and you know you haven't read it. And you're feeling the guilt of it. So if I don't come to you and bring to you these things, it's because you have made it vibrantly clear you don't want to have anything to do with it. Duly noted. But don't think for one second that your self-imposed or self-invented type of Christianity is going to do anything for you. So if you don't want to hear the truth, great. I'm not going to dishonor you by shoving it down your throat or pushing you up against the wall and forcing you to listen to it. But don't turn that around and make that out like, I've, I fear you or have submitted to some form of authority you think you've had. Take that as me honoring your request. You don't want to hear about it. I'm not going to tell you about it. Good luck in hell. Because I'm not the one you have to deal with on this. He is. I'm just a messenger. And I can promise you he's going to bring more and more messengers to you. The guy chilled, up, chilled out. He chilled out. He had some problems. He, he spoke some very 
interesting things about what he believed and how things should be instead of doing it God's way. I said, well, that's not going to get you anywhere, bud. But uh, whatever, <laughs> it's between you and him, not between you, me, and him. And so he opened up, and we and we were able to talk. And, but it, it, he, he was very, very off on a lot of things. It was, it was kind of scary. And he was teaching others that same thing. And I, I kind of had a suspicion there was some sexual stuff going on there. Don't know. Only worked with a guy a short time, and that was the end of it. But point is, we still don't give up. These guys didn't give up. They knew, okay, well, we can't get in the front door. It ain't got a back door. The windows are all blocked up with people. Okay, the roof. Nobody's on the roof. Let's get up there and let's open these tiles up and let's get him down in there. Because the Lord needs, needs literally just to look at him and he'll get healed. Let's get him healed. I imagine the guy was probably suffering quite a bit. And then they, they wanted to get him healed up. Now, why they wanted to get him healed, I don't know. Maybe they loved him. Maybe they wanted him to go work in the garden. I don't know. The point is, they didn't give up. We can't give up either. And you've got to get creative. It's like that story that I heard about that old lady. That, uh, this little old lady. She was dressed in, in older style clothes too, but she would go to the pornography shops. And they all would talk about her, and they all thought it was real cute that she'd come in there. She'd look around. She'd open the magazines up and all that. Well, they had to change some of their inventory out one day, so they were in there pulling magazines off, and all these pieces of paper were falling out of these magazines. And they started picking them up in their gospel tracks. She was putting them in the magazines. She would go through the... She went through their whole inventory and slipped in things in the, in the magazines. It was hilarious. She got creative. Okay? I can't get nobody to listen to me. I'm going to put it right in the lion's den. And she did. And it was it's kind of funny. But it worked. Uh, somebody else I talked to, they do they do this on a truck stop. They go to truck stops. They'll spend a, a Saturday or a weekend. And they'll just drive around to truck stops. And they leave them on the backs of the toilets. In the truck stops. Or they'll put them in the magazines up on the magazine rack in the truck stops. I've seen other people here in my town would go, of course, they got in trouble and so they can't do it no more because this is the way the world is. But they were putting them under people's windshields in Walmart parking lot. You know what they got them for? <laughs> because they were handing them to people and, they were, and people were taking them, were giving them to their, they put them under the windshields. They were taking them, people were throwing them on the ground. They charged those people with littering because they're the ones that put them there. Told them they couldn't do it anymore. But does that mean we give up? Nope. When all physical efforts are exhausted, when every door is shut in your face for communication on these matters, you can pray for them and there's nothing they can do to stop it. I had someone try to tell me that. I thought it was, a, but you can't stop me from praying for you. I can pray the Lord will open your eyes to see the truth. I don't want you praying for me either. You're not going to pray. I am. And there's nothing you can do to change that. There's always an avenue. There's always a way. These men, if they couldn't have gotten through the roof, very easily could have said, Guys, let's set him down here. Let's all kneel and let's pray the Lord will heal him. Right outside the building. And you know what? What happened? There is always a way. I've done it in my pickup truck. I've done it at a store. There's always a way. We just, we can't give up. Now there are some people you just got to leave alone. Don't get me wrong. There are some people out there, they're, they're the lost cause. It's going to take an act of God to get them to open their eyes and see. All from up in prayer. Put the situation before the Lord. Lord, I don't know what else to do here. It's all yours. Only you know the perfect way to deal with this. And sometimes that's that's what you have to do. That's You have to leave it at that. But we never give up. Even if you have to walk away, you put them before the Lord. Lord, send somebody else that they'll listen to. Never give up. 
And sometimes it takes you getting very creative. I saw a guy here in Texas. I don't know where he lives. He's up in San Antonio when I saw him. Whole car in giant black lettering. John 3.16. Um... Uh, Romans A, all these verses, just written, all these references written. They had it written down there. We had it all over the car, all over the car. I mean, there wasn't a part of the car that wasn't covered with a scripture verse, uh, a, a reference. It was all over the car. Creative, very creative. People leave them with uh, the, the receipt with the waitress. They'll write it on the back of the receipt so sometimes. For, for waiters and waitresses creativity and it spreads the word and you know Satan has been very covert about what he does we can be too we can be too Father we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name Father thank you for your holy word that you have given us the word of truth we can rely on in these dark times when there is barely any truth out there. Thank you for this devotion. It opens yet another opportunity and another avenue of discussion. This morning's prayer is going to be offered up as a request for us and a request for those out there that we try to reach. For us, I ask that you give us boldness in speaking the gospel and the truth to other people, that we consult every conversation we can with words of truth from your word and opportunities to discuss things and, and apply them in real-time situations and apply it in the world today and the events that are happening to help maybe get people to see the light to maybe plant some seeds my hope is that we can at least plant seeds that not so much a desire to be successful because in most cases we're not going to be on the on the face of it but that the process gets started and I offer up the others. I offer them up the, the ones that won't listen, the ones that turn us away, the ones that listen and they're, they're polite and then they go right back to what they're doing and forget what we said. That you would open the doors to their heart that they would receive this truth, that it would start to convict them, that they would start to feel something a drawing to it. It would start to make sense to them. They would start to see what's happening in the world today and know that it's in the scriptures. So that fear that everybody feels, that I'm seeing this wide band of depression sweeping through people in the world today, really badly, really, really bad, especially men. A lot of the men I know are suffering through, from with severe depression to the point that they, that they refuse to do anything. Uh, one, one I know his wife has to tell him to eat or he won't eat. Another one just refuses to do anything in his life. And I, I'm, in, I, and I'm, I'm the one taking up some of the slack. Another one won't leave his house uh, to the point that all he does is drink fruit punch and whiskey. Uh, won't eat, won't take care of him, won't do nothing. And has gone to the hospital multiple times. Almost died on one of them. So Lord... I lift those up that know the truth and fail to act. I lift those up that don't know the truth and fail to listen. And I lift those up that refuse to even hear it. That in your perfect way, in your perfect will, because you know all the right ways for these things and, and what it takes to reach a person, you would open the doors of their heart to receive your truth. Be it from us, be it from someone else, somebody get a seed planted in that heart so that in the fires of the tribulation it will at the very least in the fires of the tribulation it will grow so that they may not go to hell instead go to heaven I pray that we, we would become more successful you would make us more successful in our endeavors to reach others to share the truth with them that more opportunities you know, make us more versed in your word but that more opportunities would come so that we may reach others.
the darker the world gets, the, the less people listen, the, the worse the situation seems to become. And the harder time we have reaching people. But Father, I know that the worse things get, the the more you become prevalent and the more the gospel makes sense and the harder things get and the darker things get, the more people start looking for the light. Make us ready with the light. To deliver it to those that need it. Make us ready to give, show them the light and to lead them to you for salvation when they start looking. To always be those people that they know. I know I, when I have questions, I can go to that person. I've had this happen to me recently. People will come to me and ask me about things because they don't know about them because they know that I do this. Whether it's received or not, I don't know. And that's a lot of my disappointment. I don't know whether they're receiving it or not. But Lord, I know that there are people in the past, in, in the Bible, who have had the same scenario and never saw a single person listen. And it's not but thousands of years later and people are receiving a message. So Father, I pray that we're able to share as much as we can with as many as possible. And that we will have new creative ways to be able to share the truth with people because they're going to try to, well, they're already shutting us down. They're going to try even harder to stop us, to help us to present the kingdom, to glorify you, and to bring the word of peace to everybody because they all need to hear it. And I pray that your will is prevalent in all these things. Father, we thank you for your mercy and grace and your great love. We thank you for your free gift of salvation. We thank you for peace, the peace that defies all understanding and the joy inexpressible. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of our Lord, we pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning devotion. It's a hard road to travel. Being a Christian is not easy, and it never was meant to be. Ask any Christian from the past, and they'll tell you. Go all the way back to the beginning, and they'll tell you. Yeah, it's a hard life. Just reminds me of the song. It, as soon as I talk about it, it reminds me of the song from, uh, from Annie. It's a hard knock life for us. It is. It really is. But it is a labor of love. It is a labor of love. When we share the truth with those people, it's because we love them and we want them to see the truth in the light and come into the come into the light and to be saved. Children, adults, parents. Friends, brothers, sisters. And it's hard to deliver that message because so many of them don't want to hear it anymore. They change the subject. It happens to me in my own house. They change the subject. Because they're not thinking about what you're telling them. They're thinking about something else. It's disappointing sometimes to the point that I get so disappointed I'm, I just stop, stop talking. Well, go ahead and continue. No, you're not listening because your mind is elsewhere. That's why you're thinking of other things. You want to inter in interject that have nothing to do with the conversation. So when you're when you're more in the mood to listen, then, then we'll talk. I'm not denying them anything. They already know it. It was just frustrating to waste all that energy and waste all that time and not to have any of a register. But then I realized it's not a waste. At least it's there. At least it's being presented. At least it, it's an option still. So I keep doing it. I 
and I'll let the Lord lead on all these things. Sometimes I do have to stop and not continue because it's not going to not gonna be a thing. It's not going to be allowed. But then other times I do force the issue. I, I need to finish this conversation. We're not always going to be successful. We're not always going to win in these avenues. But what happens after is when it really comes home. Because what we do now, because we're so close to the tribulation, prepares us, not only prepares us for heaven, but prepares them for that time frame. If they're going to be in the tribulation, it prepares them for that. So that when everything starts to happen, they'll be like, whoa, wait a minute. Hey, they were telling me about this and they're gone now. Okay, we need to look into this. That's when they go to the scriptures, and that's when they get saved. That's when those seeds we plant grow. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You're going to get a lot of backlash. It is what it is. We never give up. Until they make it blatantly obvious, they are not going to have any interest in what we're doing. Then we, okay, you've made your choice. The Bible said, I'm going to have nothing to do with you if you bring another Jesus. And you cut that off. And you don't worry about that anymore. The Lord will take care of them. But there are others out there who aren't in that boat. Many others. They're looking for answers and they don't know where to find them. That's where we come in. That's where the gospel comes in. That's where God comes in. That's where Jesus Christ comes in. Because every single person knows who Jesus Christ is. And their time is coming to when the Lord will open their heart and they will receive that truth and they will get saved. And we just might be those people that give them that response. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name and I will see you in the next video.